Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I am your host, Evangelist Anita. I want to share with you a particular report concerning Yellowstone. Apparently, there's been a swarm of earthquakes that have rattled the area near Yellowstone National Park. And, you know, I was just doing some research and I, I really wanted to know what the Bible has to say about Yellowstone. So we're going to take some time. We're going to get into that in, in this broadcast I want to take your attention first before I share with you this particular report uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. Go with me again very quickly to the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. The word of the Lord says something I find very fascinating and something that should really get our attention, especially in light of all the volcanic activity that is taking place in these last days. Uh, the word of God says as follows concerning the day you stood before the Lord, your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to Moses, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach their children. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain and the mountain burned with fire to the mist of heaven with darkness cloud and thick darkness and the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire and you heard the sound of the words but saw no form you only heard a voice so he declared to you his covenant which he commanded you to perform the ten commandments and he wrote them on two tablets of stone folks I really believe that the Lord is getting our attention with the a massive amount of of earthquake activities that have been taking place uh, in these last days. And, um, you know, when we hear about the increase in seismic activity of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, uh, we really have to understand that the earth is going through what's called labor pains. And the Bible prophesied that that would take place in the last days. Now, the Ring of Fire is also known as the Rim of Fire or the Circum Pacific Belt. And it's a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many of the world's uh, largest earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. As a matter of fact, uh, the Ring of Fire has approximately 452 volcanoes. More than 75% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes lie on the Ring of Fire. Again, the Bible talks about birth pangs uh, in, in, in a couple of areas in the scripture. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 verse 8 says, All these, talking about the signs of the times, are but the beginning of birth pangs. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 also talks about something very particular concerning birth pangs and peace and safety. It says, when the people cry out, when they start to say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. All right, so let me share with you this particular article that just came out earlier, actually within the past 12 hours. Again, swarm of earthquakes rattle area near Yellowstone National Park. Nearly a dozen earthquakes have shaken the area near Yellowstone National Park in the past 24 hours, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. You've had 11 earthquakes that have been reported near West Yellowstone, Montana, again, just within the past 24 hours, and then 34 more earthquakes have hit the same area in the past 30 days, according to the earthquake track. So here, uh, you, know, we, you know, when we hear about Yellowstone, when we hear about its increase in activity, that really should get our attention. Uh, there's a lot of volcanologists, uh, you know, scientists are terribly concerned about an imminent eruption. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a particular expert that spoke on this uh, back on August 29th, 2019. They put out a warning. They said, Yellowstone eruption, we're closer to a super eruption than what most people realize. They say that this would lead to a, a terrible catastrophe worldwide. And so know, first of all, that Yellowstone supervolcano is located in the state of Wyoming here in the United States. 
And Yellowstone Super Volcano happens to be one of the most powerful volcanoes on the planet. And the last eruption uh, that took place, according to the, uh, you know, the math of scientists, happened on a major scale 640,000 years ago. Now, you, again, you have one expert that is warning that the next major eruption is very close. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the chances of a Yellowstone eruption on a yearly basis is around 1 in 730,000. But with 640,000 years already having passed since the last major eruption, you have experts stating that Yellowstone is edging closer to exploding, but, you know, you have some that are saying, well, you know, that could still be, you know, maybe thousands of years away. But see, we know that the word of God makes it very clear that, uh, you know, with the, with the Lord, a day unto the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years unto a day. So it really could happen at any given time. Uh, take journalist Brian Walsh. Uh, he, he wrote a book. Uh, it, it, it was a type of end times book. I don't know what the name of it is, but he actually explored the ways in which life on earth could come to a complete halt when it comes to Yellowstone and it exploding. He said, and I quote, he said, we're closer to Yellowstone's next super eruption than we are distant. But that day, should it come, it, it's, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to come and we need to be prepared. However, when that day does come, there would be chaos, he says, across the United States with repercussions being felt all over the world. He wrote that earthquakes around Yellowstone would gradually increase in both frequency and intensity as magma rushes towards the surface. Again, folks, this is something we've been talking about here at Open Your Eyes People for the past few years. Uh, and I, I actually want to play a soundbite before I go any further. I Scientists are releasing a new warning about the threat of a massive supervolcano eruption, like the one under Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. The European Science Foundation has released a 70-page report called Extreme Geohazards, reducing the disaster risk and increasing resilience. It references the Yellowstone supervolcano. Now, Yellowstone's volcano doesn't look like some others because it's a caldera or a crater. It, it, it's around, the, uh, uh, around ground level instead of towering into the clouds. But scientists say it covers a really enormous reserve of magma beneath the Earth's surface. We have a rendering of what scientists say this underneath that volcano, an ocean of molten rock, they tell us, that stretches for hundreds of miles. Of course, nobody needs to freak out right now at all. Scientists say there's a, only about a 10% chance of an eruption like this happening anytime this century. So there's a, there's a good chance you'll never see it. But 10%, I mean, that's not tiny. And the U.S. Geological Survey noted last year, even if Yellowstone does erupt, it could be a small incident, not some Armageddon-type thing. Michio Kaku joins us now. He's a theoretical physicist, a professor, a best-selling author, and friend, friend, of the pro, friend of the program. Give us some context on this, what we're talking about here. Well, forget the image of Yogi Bear representing Yellowstone. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. Now that's category eight. This report looked at category seven, which is much more likely once every thousand years rather than once every million years. That means in every century, there's a 10% chance that somewhere on the planet Earth, there could be a super volcanic category seven eruption. That's the danger. You, you just talked about a volcano that could, could wipe out 20 states. How, how in the world is that possible? Well, it's happened before, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3, and also 0.6 million years ago. We have the evidence of a gigantic eruption that is sufficient to tear the guts out of the U.S. of A. So this report has to be taken seriously, but hey, don't sell the store, don't panic. We don't expect it to happen in our lifetime. It, it, it's, it's hard really to imagine this, this lake of lava that stretches hundreds of miles in all directions. It, uh, how do we know that and how, how, how do they read that? Well, just two years ago, there was a scare in fact. We actually began to measure the size of this lava hotspot and it turned out to be twice as big as we previously thought. 
However, uh, the good news is that it's not migrating, it's not moving, we see no indication whatsoever that a big one is coming. However, eventually the law of averages catches up to you. And this report singled out uh, Mount Vesuvius outside Naples, Italy, outside Mexico City and Yellowstone as three hotspots where a category seven volcanic eruption could indeed take place in this century. So there are only three of this size in all the world? Well, there are several in um, Indonesia and uh, New Zealand that have had category eight eruptions, in fact. But then again, we're talking about once every million years for category eight. Category seven will be many times the size of Mount St. Helens enough to cause widespread destruction across a state, but not enough to destroy the U.S. of A. But still, something that we have to take very seriously now. What would we get in the way of warnings, Michio? Well, unlike a media from out of space, where you get no warning whatsoever, we get warnings. If you see movies like Pompeii, you know that there are days, in fact weeks, of eruptions building up, grumbling inside, underneath the ground, near the, the pocket of lava. So there would be enough time, several weeks, in order to begin evacuation if and when such an unlikely event were to take place. All right, Michio Kaku on the news deck. No time to panic, but interesting, very interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very interesting indeed. You know, uh, again, I, I find it stunning that this is the type of um, uh, concern that, again, scientists are, are putting out there. And this is what the Bible talks about, our birth pangs. Again, I was just sharing about the ring of fire, sharing with you uh, the, uh, the, the, the updates on the uh, quakes, the earthquakes that have hit Yellowstone within the past 12 to 24 hours. And we really, uh, you know, this should really get our attention because the Bible does talk about volcanic activity in the end times. And then again, you have scientists, you have experts that are stating that Yellowstone is a ticking time bomb waiting to erupt. You have geologists that have discovered something unusual. Again, you just heard Makaku say that, uh, you know, they realized it was much larger, that the caldera that they discovered was actually twice the size than they originally realized. And, you know, I know, you know, some people probably take away from that soundbite, uh, you know, you know, what was stated was that, uh, you know, it may not erupt in, in our lifetime, but the concern is that it, it, it may and, uh, you know, you have the word may there, you have the word, uh, it, you know, basically it could be, they, they claim that they're not sure. And I think the reason why they're saying that they're, they're trying to be careful with their words is so they won't cause a panic, but see, we have to be, um, you know, we have to be watchmen on the wall. Uh, we have to be steadfast. We have to be alert. Uh, Jesus told us in the scriptures in the end times, he says, what I tell you, I tell all watch. And he told us that these things would take place. He, 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 he told us about the importance of watching the end time signs, uh, the activity that will increase on the planet, uh, declaring that the day of the Lord is near. Take, for instance, the gospel of Luke chapter uh, 21, verse 34. Jesus Christ himself said, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day, the day of the Lord come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. So, you know, what many people would claim would not happen for thousands of years could happen imminently. And we really have to, uh, you know, we have to realize that we, we, we cannot close our eyes or ignore that fact because Jesus uh, you know, the word of God tells us in second Peter chapter three, verse eight, it says the following, but beloved, do not forget this one thing. Okay. So here, here, here we're, we're told something very important. We're told not to forget this one thing. What one thing is that? Well, here it is. Do not forget this one thing that with the Lord, with the Lord God almighty one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So again, we, we do have, you know, these experts are warning us 
They're saying we're closer to a super eruption than what we realize. But then you kind of have them, uh, you know, you have some of the reports saying, well, you know, we're close. This thing could erupt and it's going to be so catastrophic uh, that, 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 that the whole world would collapse. It, it would be a, 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 a devastating blow. It would be a sucker punch to the planet and it would cause a devastation on a global scale. It would cause a worldwide economic collapse. It would cause imminent famine to happen where millions of people would cease uh, to survive within months and more. It would cause the skies to be darkened over the United States of America where the sun won't shine and that would be a devastation to the crops. And so you, you have them proclaiming, you have them sounding this alarm and then at the same time saying, but it probably won't happen till hundreds or thousands of years from now. And it reminds me of many end time eschatology teachers where they talk about the end times. They talk about the second return of Jesus Christ. They talk about, um, you know, all the signs of the times that Jesus warned would take place in the times that we're living in, the earthquakes, the famines, the, the pestilences happening in various places. And then after they lay it all out, then they say, uh, but you know, we, we, you know, we don't have to worry about that because we won't be here. Uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon, or, you know, it, it's not, it, we're not here yet, but we're, we're going to talk about that. No, the Lord is speaking through people, uh, both, uh, those that are believers in him and those that are not. Uh, to proclaim that the hour is now, that, that, that the hour is late, that these things are happening because, uh, it's, it, it, because we are edging closer, because it is near, it's at the doors, because uh, the fig tree is already budding, uh, the signs are evident, and uh, the super eruption in this case concerning Yellowstone, even though they're claiming that it, it, it likely may not happen in our lifetime, it, it, it likely may happen tens or even hundreds of, or, or of thousands of years away. Again, we must remember what the word of God tells us. He tells us, he tells us, beloved, do not forget this one thing that in the midst of so much, uh, you know, you know, man is trying to control circumstances. Man is trying to say, you know, they're, they're putting out the warnings out there and then they're trying to say, but peace be still, but they have no power to say peace be still. If the peace of God is not in them, they're trying to prevent panic instead of, uh, you know, preparing the people, warning the people. And the reason why is because many of these people are not filled with the spirit of God. They're not, they're not equipped. They're able to s bring out a, a half, you know, a part, you know, portion of, of, of the importance of, 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 of alerting the people, but, not, but they're not able to bring the rest, which is very important, which is uh, salvation. It's, it's proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's proclaiming, yes, that the day of the Lord is at hand. Yes, these are signs of the times. Yes, uh, you know, of course, the, the, you know, volcanic activity that has increased on the worldwide scale is, is a major uh, player in, 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 in times biblical prophecy. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you, you, you know, fear not be, be watchful. Uh, again, there's importance in watching and give your life to Jesus Christ. Because again, the day of the Lord is at hand. It's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. And again, volcanic activity is a major sign of the end times. It's a major sign of soon coming judgment. I want to read a bit further in second Peter chapter three, uh, this time in verse seven, the word of God says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And then it goes on to say here, verse 10, uh, actually I'll read in verse nine, excuse me, but the, the, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And then it says the following in verse 10, hear this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So yes, even though God is long suffering, even though it seems like, well, you know, we can still be here for another tens of thousands of years or we won't be here. We don't have to worry about any of this stuff. It's being talked about for a reason. It's being sounded out for a reason. The alarm is sounding for a very important reason. And the reason why is this, because the day of the Lord is at hand. The reason why is this, because with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The, the reason why is this, is because, again, it says here in verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. That almost sounds like, to me, a number of super volcanoes uh, being active in the world at the same time. 
That sounds like, uh, you know, maybe, you know, uh, just the, it, well, it sounds like revelation. There's a scripture in the portion in, in the book of revelation that talks about, uh, you know, cosmic disturbances. It talks about what I just shared with you here in second Peter. Uh, I, I'll share with you now in revelation chapter six, verse 12, the word of God says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops his late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? So again, earthquakes uh, or you know volcanic you know volcanic activity in the end times is a major precursor to the day of the Lord. Is a major precursor to the second return of Jesus Christ. I want to also share with you Psalm chapter one hundred four verse thirty two. Psalm chapter one hundred four. Uh, I'll read it a bit in context. I'll read it from verse thirty one through thirty three. It talks about. How, well, I'll share with you. It says here, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. That's earthquakes. He touches the hills and they smoke. That's volcanic activity. And then it says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Exodus talks about a mountain of fire. Exodus chapter 19, verse 17 through 19 says, Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Folks, God is speaking to each and every one of us in these end times. And he's declaring that he, his day is coming. He's declaring that the day of the Lord is at hand. Psalm chapter 144, verse four through six says, man is like a breath. We must give our lives to Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in anything else or anyone else except through Jesus. Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heaven, O Lord. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Folks, he is touching mountains in these end times. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. You know, when I talk about the day of the Lord, I talk about something very, very prophetic and, and biblical and very terrifying. And, you know, the day of the Lord is, uh, is, is, is mentioned throughout scripture uh, for a very important reason, uh, because it is the Lord himself that will be coming. And when he comes, it is not to be our, um, our, it's not to be the world's friend. God is so, so jealous over us. He, he, he says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. And so we really have to understand that when he comes, he's looking, you know, he, you know, you know, you know, Jesus himself even said, when, when, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Will I, when I come back, will I even find faith on the earth? Because the day of the Lord is meant to destroy evil men and proclaim who God is in the midst of such sin in the world. So I want to read to you a portion of scripture concerning, or, you know, you know, just sharing what the Bible says about the day of the Lord. Zechariah chapter 14. 
Actually, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna share with you another portion of scripture. I think I'm gonna take you to Joel chapter two. Give me one moment. Joel chapter two. And it talks about the day of the Lord. Joel chapter two, verse one says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains A people come great and strong, the like of of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. And then it goes on to say how it will look on, on that day. Verse six, before them, the people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Then it goes on to say, verse 10, the earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark. That's also what it says in the book of Acts chapter two. The stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army. His camp is very great for strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Folks, not any one of us can endure the day of the Lord. And that's why it is so important that we submit and surrender our entire life to Jesus Christ. It is so important that we bow ourselves down because the Lord says that on that day when he comes, everything proud and lofty, everything lifted up will be brought low. And in that day, when, when the day of the Lord comes, a man who trusted in his idols of silver and gold, a man who would bow down and worship the creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever, will be severed from the Lord's presence. The glory of God's majesty will shake the earth mightily on that day. People will seek to run from the terror of the Lord. And we're warned for us to separate ourselves from such people. Because they, they give, because they, they're, they, they're, they're of no account. So let it be that we are heeding the word of the Lord in these end times and, and, and we're, 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 we're heeding the signs that are, of, of, you know, that are happening around the world. Let it be that we are found in the faith of Jesus Christ and we are not you know, you know, you know, we're, we're unashamed because he is coming again. <clears throat> He's coming again and every eye shall see him. Even them that pierced him. The word of God says in Isaiah, uh, the word of God says in, in, in revelation, excuse me. Every eye shall see him. Even them that pierced him. And Again, the lofty looks of man will be humbled. Again, it's not God's will that any man shall perish, but that all come to repentance. And we're, we're, we're told to humble ourselves. He who humbles himself will be exalted. And he who, who, who exalts himself will be humbled. I want to read another portion of scripture to you, this time found in Amos chapter 5, that talks about the day of the Lord. 
And it says here in verse 16, Therefore the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, There shall be wailing in all streets. They shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, they shall call the farmer to mourning, the skillful lamenters to wailing, and all vineyards there shall be wailing. For I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. Or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? That is how he describes his, his day, his coming. So many people are excited about the second return of Jesus Christ. And, ooh, I'm looking forward to Jesus, you know, uh, you know, beaming me up, Scotty. I just look forward to him coming and, and, and just getting me out of here and, and me kind of tapping him on the shoulder, kind of like a homeboy does to another homeboy. Say, man, wh wh what took you so long, you know? I was waiting for you. It's about time you came. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like that. The day of the Lord is going to be a time of great travail. And uh, many will fall on that day and, and, and will rise no more. I, I pray that each and every one of you give heed to the words that come from the Lord's mouth tonight. And that you give God glory. And that you are aware and, and that you're being led by the Spirit of God to proclaim him to others and to be in his presence. We must be in the presence of God for as long as we live. This is not the time to be unprotected or to uh, do, you know, just to kind of, you know, it's not the time to leave God. You know, I was, I was just, I, I saw an article earlier today um, where a person uh, a well-known, I don't know if he was a singer. I, don't, I, I may be able to kind of bring it up here. I have my, my laptop in front of me, so maybe I'll be able to get it here. Give me one moment. But he was a well-known fella. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I've ever even heard of him, but I guess many Christians have. Christian rock band members react to lead singer of Hawk Nelson revealing he does not believe in God. Folks, this is exactly what, this is a very wrong thing to do. This is the very last thing anyone needs to do is to leave God or to claim that they have fallen away from the faith <clears throat> in these end times. It's like being on the Titanic and rejecting your life vest or the raft that's available to save your life and say no i don't need it i don't believe in it i'll be fine on my own i'm a good swimmer not realizing that the suction alone of the vessel that will that's being pulled down by the weight of the ocean will suck them in as well so in 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 in, in all that's taking place in the times that we're living in in the times of great apostasy that we're living in the falling away happening right now. Jesus warned us about this. We must be sanctified by the word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 4, the word says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy. And more. The entire world will see earthquakes and eruptions in the end of days. It will go through a crucible of fire and trial. So it is my prayer that each and every one of you be saved and born again and stay saved. That you hold fast the confession of your hope without wavering for he, God Almighty, who promised is faithful. And that you would consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. 
It is my prayer that you have the faith of Abraham and that you be counted worthy of your calling in these last days. It is my prayer that you continue to live by faith for the just shall live by faith. The word of God tells us a warning in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we, you and I, believers in these end times, we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Let it be that we are determined within ourselves to be students of the word of God, workmen unto the Lord, not needing to be ashamed of us reading and knowing and understanding the Bible and giving God praise for it and its transformation in us, how it transforms us. Let it be that he who has established us in Christ and has anointed us in God, may it be that we are sealed for the day of redemption in all things, as he has given us a spirit in our hearts as a guarantee of this. Don't lose heart. So much things happening in the world today, so much reports on the news, so much politics, so much despair, so much anger. Oh, the anger alone. But we are told, do not lose heart. Even though you see all these things taking place, don't lose heart. It's temporal. We're told that we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because the things which we are seeing are temporary. No need to get angry over temporal situations. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And let's have our focus on that. And let's just make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to the Father. Knowing that each and every one of us will have to give an account on the day of judgment as we all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of all that we've done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance unto you, and give you his perfect peace. For the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. I want to invite you to visit my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com. Again, www.openyoureyespeople.com. We are celebrating 10 years of full-time evangelistic ministry and God's faithfulness through it all. And so we want you to celebrate with us by learning more about my ministry, uh, you know, engaging yourself in all that we have to offer, and uh, maybe even showing your congratulations, showing your support by placing a donation towards the work of this end-time ministry. You know, your donations help make it possible for us to do what we get to do in preaching the gospel to every nation across the globe through these broadcasts. I want to say thank you in advance. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers and your love. May God Almighty protect you and keep you safe under the shadow of his wings in these end times. Again, our website is www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 218, Schertz, Texas 78154. Again, P.O. Box 218, Schertz, Texas 78154. All right, my friends, until the next time, may you all be richly blessed. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.